That's better. This time, this time it said it's recording. How are you? Um, lungs could be better. How are you? Yeah, similar. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm convinced this respiratory issue is something to do with the. Uh, it's not just. Um, well, I don't want to go go into things that. There's somebody's done a lot of research on it, and it's a very common symptom of, uh, uh, with people that have um, uh, been victimised by childhood experiments that they didn't consent to. Because really? you've never smoked, have you? And there's no COPD in your family. I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know how much of what I've put up you've seen. My father's Look, alias I was Dick Oakley. Yes, I saw that. Mr. Coakley, who had COPD. Yeah, I'm going to rewind and just actually introduce this. Yeah. Um, so, so, do you want me to use your real name, or do you want me to use your pseudonym? You use either. I don't care. Uh, okay. I, so this I, is a this is a, a long last a first interview with Sue Helen Oakley, also uh, goes by Free Woman, and a uh, very brave lady in poor health who's spent eight years researching uh, and trying to prove that which she knows to be true um, and has done some amazing work with that. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that and then just ask you some questions as we go. We may not cover details to the extent that you're doing in your uploading, which is fantastic. Thank you. I, I, I really hope you don't regret stretching to get internet and skype and youtube and all that it is, it is a challenge i don't know about you but at my age all this stuff is very challenging very <laughs> but <laughs> but i pray, i pray that it's worth it and i pray that you'll find it was worth it as well so so um i think i'm going to do an overview this time and that because otherwise the details will just go over people's heads not sure what context we're speaking yeah. in so I think the most shocking revelation, not shocking, but the of consequence revelation you made, um, aside from all that we have in common, is that you are, uh, is it the daughter or the granddaughter of a, a Nazi? Daughter. Wow. And that's, that's, that's huge. And uh, would you be happy to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um... I would. He was taken from England to Nazi... Well, in 1926, between World War One and World War Two, he was taken to Wiesbaden by his army father. Okay. And while he was in Wiesbaden, he joined an organisation called Van der Vogel. Um, not many people have heard of it, but anyway, it, Van der Vogel was subsumed into Hitler Youth, and I have photographs of him in Hitler Youth and in Van der Vogel. Um, so that went on till he was 13 and they say, they say it can't be undone. They say once you've had that brainwashing, it can't be undone. And he was a Nazi till his dying day. What, what age was he when he went there? He was 10 when he went there. Are there any German connections with your family? Difficult one. I'm not quite sure. Um, there are with my husband's family. He was half German. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Prior to that, I don't know. So your father was nine, and he was taken to Wiesbaden. Ten. Or oh, ten. Yeah. And um, for three years, he had three years brainwashing in Hitler Youth. Yeah. Basically, what? Van der Vogel first, then Hitler Youth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And why did your grandfather take him there? Well, um, the army posted his father there, and to uh, to where? Sorry, to the to army. Wiesbaden. Sorry, the army posted his father to Wiesbaden. Okay. And um, he, I've got his mother's passport with him on it um, to enter occupied territory, i.e., and, you know, Germany specified. Uh, not, yeah, it is occupied. I've got a, I should have produced it. I didn't know. Uh, no, it's okay, because at this stage, we're not doing documentary forensic evidence. That's the kind of thing that you're doing absolutely right. You're documenting and, and recording and. You're doing the forensic side on your YouTube and on your Facebook videos. So the evidence is there. And I do look at it. I just couldn't find your YouTube channel. 
So don't worry about details at the moment because this is an overview. Okay. But that's very interesting about, um, you know, that he ends up in Van der Vogel and then hit the youth just coincidentally because his dad's posted to Germany. Yeah. Because I had similar... Um, I'll just make it clear to anybody that I don't call my uh, videos interviews because I, I'm more interested in an exchange to find common ground. But um, I, my, my sister that died and myself were born in Germany on a military, in a military hospital. And I, I have a German birth certificate. And the, the excuse was, the story was that the military registrar was on holiday. No, in fact, the story changed. The story changed that Dad didn't want any of us to have British passports, which we would if we had military birth certs overseas, um, because he was in the British Air Force, even though he was Irish. So he made my mother cycle to Randalen to the German birth registrar and say, oh, the military registrar's on holiday. Can you just give me a birth cert for my daughter, please? So I believe that was, uh, you know, it wasn't random. And um, for 25 years, I dated somebody who worked for the German Foreign Service, Foreign Office. And uh, when he was going to propose to me, he had to get clearance at work. And when he said that I had a German birth cert, he was given clearance. Now, we didn't end up marrying, but... I've also had Germans sort of engineered into my life a lot. Oh, as, even as recently as two years ago, uh, a very suave, sophisticated, well-educated uh, ex-Deutsche Bank employee turned up in our small rural Irish town and went about courting me. And as it happened, I didn't get... Uh, I did date him and I did like him. But I decided not to get intimate with him until I could gauge fully who he was and where he was coming from. Mm. And he disappeared after two months. And yeah. he disappeared, leaving a trail of uh, sort of con, you know, lies and, and mess and people he'd conned out of money, including me. And so, not, I didn't, I, I, you know, drew the line at 150 bucks, 150 euro, but he conned others for more. And he was a very suspect character. And it's like, so all through my life, it's almost like I've been pushed towards pursuing the German connection and I've resisted it. Ditto. So I'm very, very interested at you saying that, you know, just supposedly randomly, your father ended up in Van der Vogel and Hitler Youth yep. randomly because of a military posting well, of his father. It's stupid to me for the British Army to send its personnel with their children to Germany between war, well, of course, you could, I think World War Two could be seen coming by that time, and obviously you're putting your kids at risk of indoctrination, aren't you? I would have thought that the, uh, yeah, the, the kids of the army. Yeah, where I was born, um, the there was a lady. Work. My father ran the kitchens at this military hospital, which was purpose built to Freemasonic specifications. And a, a German lady worked in the kitchens with him and he allowed her daughter to be my godmother. And her son-in-law is a paedophile. He's dead now, but he was a paedophile. So from 12 years of age, I was sent unaccompanied there at 12, at 12 by boat. You know, at 12, who puts a 12-year-old on a boat at Harwich to the Hook of Holland to get a train to Aachen and change to Dusseldorf and then be in the company of a, a, a prosecuted paedophile? for a month at a time every summer, you know, and and her husband, this lady, she was a lovely lady, but her husband was involved with um, Hitler as well. He was, he wouldn't talk about it, but it was a sort of hushed family thing that Opa, as we called him, Grandpa, was uh, was in Hitler Youth, and, and uh, or in Hitler Youth, or in the SS, I don't know, it was kind of this hushed family secret. But the German... You see, with the royal family being actually German, there's far more connections than people have ever... Oh, yeah. You know, people that think we're just British say, why would you put military children at risk? But we're not just British. I mean, in terms of our monarchy and our mm. government, mm. you know. So that's very interesting. So how, how you say he was a Nazi till his dying day. How did that show up? Oh, Christ. He used to make me draw swastikas when I was a kid. Um... 
he used to make me draw the the, the double eight, which you know the double eight. It stands for H H, which stands stands for Heil Hitler. It's the kind of code. Oh, I can't. Um, and what I can't figure out is he his, he was actually married to a woman who lived at the address eighty eight, eighty eight six Crossroad. Um, yes. So um, I actually wonder if it was a kind of HQ for English Nazis, because there were yeah. loads and loads, as you know, of Nazi organisations in England in the 1930s. Yeah, and particularly Both. in Jersey, Jersey, the Channel Islands. Um, I think also, I read recently something about the Canaries as well, which is a bit disturbing. But it was supposed to be they got they got Ted Heath at, at Oxford. And um, they, he was a victim of, but they also taught him how to use uh, blackmail and paedophilia for political advancement. Mm. The Germans were very refined in that area, and they and they and the British learned very quickly. The German secret services taught the British secret services how to maximise raping, you know, filming or photographing or documenting up and coming politicians kitty fiddling and raping and you know it's horrible it's horrible yeah so what was the youngest age you remember him having you draw swastikas and Heil Hitler and all that mm, about six six or wow. seven and what other things would would have you say he was like that to his dying day um he always politically defended Germany you know he 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 was never he disliked the Japanese um, which I can't quite figure out, but he, he always defended Germany. Okay. Um, was he racist? He, yes and no. I mean... Mm, was he bigoted? Was he into eugenics? He was definitely was into he... eugenics. Definitely into eugenics. Okay. Very, very bigoted. Very, very opinionated. You couldn't have an opinion that was different from his. Was he a lifelong that... Tory voter? Sorry? Was he a lifelong conservative voter? Oh, God, yes. And my mother as well, but... Interesting. Interesting. 